I have Ryan here helping me reinstall these valve covers after we clean them. Notice we did not polish them, we cleaned them because we wanted them to keep the original factory look. So it takes a little special technique, but I have to admit, Ryan did a great job and he's tightening these bolts down here. Also, if you look, he's got some stuff on top of the fender. Hey, Ryan, you want to explain what's going on with all that padding you got there? Yeah, absolutely. So the top of these 107 fenders are super wide and really prone to denting, especially if you're putting any concentrated pressure elbows leaning on it. So I've got some rubber contact um, padding, two fender covers, and then a couple other padding just to make sure that <laughs> There's no dents on top of the really wide fender there, too. All right. So. Well, thank you. I appreciate your care <laughs> and concern about Cherry here. Absolutely. So the other thing, too, that always want to make sure that you replace the copper washers on these. The ones that we took off of this had obviously been reused, and those are a crush washer. So you're going to want to replace it every time to make sure that it's getting the proper seal. You don't want these valve cover gaskets to leak. So just save yourself some headache and replace those copper washers. If you don't think your V8 needs a valve cover replacement, just check that rear lower corner in the back towards the firewall. Almost all of them are wet with engine oil, particularly if they've been on a long time. I've asked Ryan to go ahead and pull the spark plugs out. We want to see what they look like and see what is actually in the engine. Ryan, can you explain to the viewers a couple tips on getting plugs out of these engines? Absolutely. So first thing, you're gonna to wanna to use compressed air to blow out around the spark plug wells. The last thing you wanna do is to knock dirt or debris into the combustion chamber um, when you take those out. So we'll use this to blow all the dirt and debris that's accumulated out there. You want to make sure that you're blowing all the way around each one of the spark plug wells to, to bust for free any of the uh, dirt or debris there. The next most important thing is to have the right tool. Now this is a very stiff flex head magnetic spark plug socket. But that actually is going to allow us to get in there and get on that with the right angle and then access to use it. And then access to uh, break each one of those loose. I think what I'm going to have to do is just pull those four plugs out and then we'll come back and take a good look at them. Who knows what we're going to find? So Ryan, back to what you were saying. <laughs> I think you maybe didn't have your Wheaties this morning. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, either not enough coffee or too much, one of the two. <laughs> well, let's take a look at this. We just removed these plugs from Cherry's V8 engine. Does anybody see a no-no here? In my book, this is a big no-no. If you look closely, these are NGK Platinum spark plugs, and you'll notice they don't appear to be burning all that well. I've said this over and over again in videos the last 10 years, do not use Platinum spark plugs in these older model Mercedes engines. You only want to use Bosch super plugs. This is the only thing we sell for the R107 V8s, all the way from the late 60s all the way up until the early 90s. The other thing is, Ryan was asking me, hey Kent, what's, what's going on here? Look at this plug. It looks like it's blowing oil right out to the threads onto the housing of the spark plug. We got poking around there and look, that's not oil. That's anti-seize. <laughs> so that's the reason these plugs are all gooped up. Somebody probably just dipped these in anti-seize and stuck them in the engine because we have anises all over the place. We had to get these cotton swabs and put brake cleaner on, go down in there and clean out the threads on all eight spark plug holes. This is what we're using, by the way. This is a lint-free swab, and if you put brake cleaner on, you can get down in there and just clean those threads out. Well, I don't believe in anises on the newer plugs because all these manufacturers now are putting a special coating on the threads to prevent seizure between the spark plug and the head. 
If you do have to put anises on your plugs, you just put a little teeny dab right there, right in the center. It's going to heat up and spread around. So obviously somebody here, he just took a paintbrush and just painted a whole bunch of anises on these plugs, stuck them in. It looks like not only the threads are all gummed up, but it looks like he got the tips gummed up as well. So we're seeing two no-nos right here, folks. No, no. No platinum plugs, no excessive anises. So you liked my rant, right, Ryan? Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, every, everything okay. you say, and I'm with you. Okay. Oh, oh, I couldn't man. help myself. Sorry about that. So what are you doing so, them now? All right. You're, so get, you're trying to get these in, right? Yeah, we're getting these plugs back in. I gapped them to 32 thousandths. Uh, now we're just installing them. Got the other bank installed, so we're working here. And what in the world have you got this fuel hose here for? So we've got... Uh, and you don't have fuel? You got fuel going into the other plugs? <laughs> is that going to give us more power? More power, Is that maybe, direct yeah. injection or indirect <laughs> injection? What do you got there? <laughs> this is one of the situations where we like braided fuel hose. So it just allows us a little flexible angle to be able to install it by hand without cross-threading and feel it pretty well. But give you a little bit more to work with than just trying to use your fingers and, and get it in there and maybe get it in crooked. So this is an anti-cross-threading measure that uh, nice little trick to use. Oh yes. Look at that. The braided fuel hose in this situation allows you a better grip. Uh, like you said, it's the only place I like using braided fuel hose. <laughs> All right, with these plugs in, I think old Cherry here is going to run a lot better. Absolutely. If you're planning to change the spark plugs in your 107, this is the only plug you want to use, and this is by far the best socket you can use. Notice how stiff it is. If you've used other universal type sockets, you know, they flop around, but this one can actually hold its position even with a spark plug in the socket, as you can see here. And then, of course, you saw I use this braided hose to install the plugs to keep them from stripping. This is very important on these engines. If you strip out the spark plug holes, you're going to have a big wrench dance. So what I have on my website is a special kit just for R107 owners. You're going to get the full set of eight plugs. You're going to get the special flex spark plug socket. And I'm going to include, at no extra charge, a length of this special braided hose to help you install the spark plugs in your SL.